my day. So why is this important? Uh, there are many different flavors in the ice cream bowl of American history and American music. And sometimes different flavors can get neglected. And so my research topic, the orchestral music of black American composers, seeks to address that need. My dissertation topic is the orchestral music of black American composers. Uh, so what you're going to learn today, uh, I'm going to start with an introduction, background, and methodology of my research. And then we're going to talk about uh, musical style periods, which most of you are familiar with, and look at selected composers in each style period. But by way of introduction and background, uh, since the colonial period, 1619 to 1775, black Americans have contributed to the musical life and output uh, in America. When they came in the slave trade, uh, mainly in the North, songs, hymns, uh, spiritual songs uh, that were influenced from African uh, tribal music was, was very uh, popular at the time. Also, recreational folk music for dances, holidays, and festivals were key. A little bit later, in the early 1800s, uh, there became a movement of independent black churches that were forming, mostly the Methodist congregations. They uh, later became the African Methodist Episcopal Church, um, which is a very, very old denomination. And they had camp meetings. And so at these camp meetings, uh, lots of hymns, lots of spiritual songs were, were uh, happening in the early 1800s. Uh, in the New Orleans area, there was a 100-member Black Symphony Orchestra in the 1830s, uh, and it was called the Negro Philharmonic Society. There were military service bands also, and there were Frank Johnson was a famous uh, trumpet player. He was also a composer and a conductor, and uh, he lived in, in Philadelphia. There we go. Oh, Frank, can you get that full screen for me, Alex? <coughs> Bottom left-hand corner, um, we'll get it. So here's one of them, the Jenkins Orphanage Band. 
And uh, if you, you might be familiar with our history, that doesn't really happen in the United States. Like, you can have a legitimate love kid, love children, but you don't really publicly claim, claim them, but, and you might not even support them. But French values were different. Uh, they supported their children, and uh, Chevalier's father loved him, took him back to Paris when Chevalier was a early, young teenager and enrolled him in school. Chevalier was uh, also a very good fencer and a very talented violinist. And apparently he was selected to be the leader of the Paris Opera, but that's a little too progressive for some people's taste. He was not allowed to take that position. They hired him one. So uh, you know, that was disheartening for them, but um, we really see in this period how, again, Parents took care of their, their children, and, uh, and in New Orleans, there's a remnant of the, the mindset, of the French mindset, to where people of color could exist and they could function within society. Um, after we acquired Louisiana and Louisiana Purchase, that becomes less so, and then what we would think of as traditional U.S. antebellum, very stratified race relations started to take over. But there was a period of time where was not the case. So, what period comes next? After classical. Romantic. There it is. So, romantic composers, uh, the first American romantic composer, I think, is Edmund Dayton, and he's on the handout that you got. Born 1827, died in 1903. Again, he was born in Nolens. But again, this is later uh, in our history, and after about five or ten years of, of very limited success, there was a hostility, growing hostility toward black musicians at the time, he went down to Mexico to study. And then by, uh, he went to France by Mexico, where he lived most of his adult life and was a very active musician in Paris. Uh, in the meantime, just as a quick aside, he sold cigars to papers. When he was in the US, so I thought that was an interesting little fact. So that's Edwin Day Day. We're going to go back through the period of music in a little bit, but I want to just kind of flesh out the composers. And they're also on uh, the pictures are on the uh, outline I gave you. So that's Edwin Day Day American. Samuel Coleridge Taylor, named after the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, uh, is, he was a British black composer. So he wasn't really American, but he did, he was very influential uh, to American composers. He was known as the African Mahler. Mahler, as in Gustav Mahler, we haven't really gotten to him yet, but we will in the next two or three class periods. Gustav Mahler was a prolific orchestral composer uh, in the late, in the mid to late 19th century. Uh, so, Chevalier was born in 1875, died in 1912. Had a couple of U.S. tours where he was here. He, uh, his father was actually uh, Creole, and uh, he married an English woman, a white English woman. And his father went back to Haiti uh, and did some service with in Africa. He didn't know he had uh, his son until much later. So anyway, his his mother raised him, and he got, had opportunity to study. And his music is. Uh, his most well-known composition is the High Rock's Wedding Piece. It's an oratorio. Um, but we'll play a little selection today to give, give you a sense of his music. Uh, he, there are three schools in the United States named after him. And uh, he, he greatly encouraged the black community here to make music and to produce music. So he's important. So after the Romantic period, comes what? Mr. B. Crum. What's after? Uh, Impressionist, yeah, so that's kind of a French period. Uh, basically, we get into the 20th century. Uh, and there are a couple composers to know. Uh, I have them listed in, they're not in the most chronological order. I have uh, William Grant Still first, and then I have Paul Price. I kind of did that on purpose. William Grant Still is known as the dean of uh, black composers or African American composers. He was very prolific for a lot of pieces. He's the most well known. So I kind of put, I put him there, born in 1895, uh, 1978. But, um, so, but Florence 
price technically comes first. He was born in 1887, died in 1953. And she, wrote, she was born in Arkansas, wrote the symphony in E minor, which was performed by the Chicago Symphony in 1933. So that was significant. That's a black composer, poor black composer. Uh, William Grant Still, he's younger. Again, he's considered the dean of African American composers because he was so prolific. Uh, wrote many symphonies, many symphonies, he has five or six symphonies. Uh, his symphony number one, the Afro-American, was the first symphony to be performed by a major uh, U.S. orchestra, the Rochester Philharmonic, so a significant orchestra. Uh, the next generation of composers, Ulysses K, you see him there, that was a mountain axe one. Little handout. Born in 1917, died in 1995. He, uh, we're going to listen to a piece of his. Uh, his style is uh, modernist, angular, sometimes neoclassical. We'll hear that in a moment. George Walker, he's the only composer, only black composer to have won the Pulitzer Prize in music. We'll listen to a piece that he wrote for that. Yeah, he's working today. And uh, the, the piece is called My Actual Voice in the Orchestra. He's born in 1922. Um, and he still emails. I emailed him with a question. He emailed me back. He was 93 years old. He still emailed. Some gal emailed me back. But... Uh, then Alan Singleton, we, I have him there. He's living, composer, born in 1940. New York. Um, got his training at New York, at New York University. Then he went and lived in Germany for 15 years. He lived in Germany from 1971 to the mid 80s. Then he became the resident uh, composer of the Atlanta Symphony, 1985 to 1988. And uh, he emails as well. His birthday is one week after my mother. I wish him a happy birthday. And he said, well, thank you. I hope your mother has a happy birthday. So he's a cool guy. I hope he'll give us some of his music. Uh, the next generation, baby boom generation, Tanea Leon. <coughs> she was born in Cuba. She lived in New York, born in 19... Uh, 43, 44. Uh, she has a piece, Bata. She likes to use African instruments in her pieces. Wow. So that's significant. George Lewis, born in 1952, born in Chicago. He teaches composition at Columbia University in New York City. And he was active and still very active. He was one of the first pioneers in computer music. Uh, so his piece, he wrote a piece for an orchestra called Mimics. <coughs> we'll listen to that, and uh, I want you to be aware of how it sounds like computer music. There's not actually computers in it, but it is very, um, uh, it's very computer-like, and I think you'll enjoy it. The latest generation of composers, Daniel Bernard Romain, born in 1970, he's living and working, he's active in New York. He has infused hip-hop elements in his orchestral music. And uh, he's done lots of collaborations, um, crossing, crossing genres with his music. And Jonathan Bailey Holland, born in 1974, he teaches in Boston at the Berkeley School of Music, which is uh, known for their jazz and commercial program. And he has a very distinctive uh, jazz-influenced voice that's all his own. Okay, so um, I'm going to, without further ado, have some of my friends come out, and we're going to have a live example of some of this music interspersed with some recorded examples. So, uh, just bear with us as I have a little transition here.
Okay. So uh, I want to play a little bit of Chevalier de Saint George, the classic composer. Here's a, just a taste of his music. This is his violin concerto. Thank you. 
bit of the second one, let's add these.
simply named E minor by Florence Price.
University of uh, Indiana University, uh, the Department of Jazz Studies, a distinguished professor there, uh, known primarily as a jazz educator. He also has some symphonic compositions. Uh, this one, uh, Lazy Summer Days, and you'll hear the jazz inflection in this. to uh, pointillistic 
they were the mystic type, type of music. Uh, and we're going to hear some hip hop infusion music in a little bit uh, with Andy Bernard Remain, who's the next composer. <coughs> Voodoo, Voodoo Violin Concerto is the title. The violinist in this is the composer. Daniel, Mark, Daniel Bernard Remain, he goes by DDR. Catch that. There he is.
different flavors, just like there's many different flavors in the Thank you for coming. Your concert report is due on Thursday.